Welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars Live here at the Edge Conference Centre in Wigan. We've had some heavy rock and roll the last uh, 10, 20 minutes. Very good. We're going to bring it right down now with Simon Jones, all the way up from Cornwall. Nice to meet you, Simon. How are you doing? We've met before lots of times, Simon. I've known you a very long time. I you have. I don't say how long. Longer than I want to admit. Yes, but your guitar collection, I've seen you have red strats, all the Les Pauls and all that sort of stuff, and suddenly you went down the find something different road. Odd. Uh, well, odd and weird, I would say. Very unusual guitar collection this time. Pick this one first. Well, I brought a, obviously, I brought a, a bit of a collection along that was displayed. Actually, this now. is a very small percentage of the collection. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, what I've got here, really, is just to show off some, some different things that you don't usually hear. Um, this, I'm going to start with this. This is actually nothing special it's amazingly special but made it's by. not it's, it's an alvarez um cheap i think it's a chinese made one but the thing these get talked about baritone guitars get talked about and lots of people go oh yeah baritone but most people think of like metal they've got a detune guitar and they're doing metal and that sort of thing it's not if you get an acoustic it's very different i mean you basically because you can play all the metal guitar playing we see works. Well, i've seen you play live you're a very very good electric guitar player but well, you're going to demonstrate some picking well yeah just to show what the, i mean i think every guitarist that has got a, 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 an interested bone in their body in sort of ex, extending their vocabulary on and, and any instrument should have a baritone because it's I got it and it changed my life. It, it was one of those things you couldn't really put down. As soon as you got it, you're like, oh my God, everything sounds so much better. See? It's very rich, it's like, I suppose it's like the guitar version of a cello. There's it? essence of um, Jamaican, uh, all the seated guitars. Yeah, it's, but I mean, what you've got with the baritone is it's five, it's basically, you think of a normal guitar, it's five frets lower. Mm. Um, so you can play everything normally. Um, it's also good if you're singing, if you want to low, lower something to a pitch that you can actually sing to, you can, you can play on a baritone. Um, but I love it. It's just a great. As you and say, if, a if you chuck me that one, we can go one it. one even check it out. deeper. Let be in it. Chuck it. You're going to risk me. So that's fairly big, large, bulbous body. Much big, like, large, like, and like my own. Very shiny. And this one is a contrabass, and this is this is essentially um, an octave guitar. So you've got so so normal guitar is there, and then everything else is lower. Oh yes, yes. So it's like. Which is very rich and low, beautiful sort of. That sort of, um, which is lovely. Obviously, it's got these massive, great silk strings mm. on it. What size are they? They're yeah, size, la size large. We're we going to go. I don't know. <laughs> but they're. I had to actually order in a set from America. Um, but this was again. It, it, when it comes to collecting. If you kind of keep your eyes open, you don't really know what's going to come around the corner. And I didn't know I wanted this until someone said, I've got this. So I went, oh, God, yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. I didn't know I needed it until, you know, the moment it arrived on my lap. How old is this one? This one, it's actually, again, this, this is an Aria, but it's, it's actually a master-built Aria. Um, they didn't make them for very long. I think it's about 90, 96, I think, this one. Um, but huge, huge great thing. Uh, just play some chords again, like you do. <laughs> Depth is fantastic. It's lovely, isn't it? Just yeah, rich I mean, I, you and. Can hear songs and lyrics I, out, as soon as I got this, I started thinking, oh, I can I can do wine bar gigs now. I can sit in the corner, just quietly, and play some chords whilst everybody's having their dinner, and just kind of. And get paid loads of money. Is it? Don't have to put up with drummers then. <laughs> well, it's all out the window when a drummer's got. Sorry, drummers. <laughs> anyway, it's that one. There we go. Okay, swap That's this one. Yeah, one. this little puppy here. I like this one. This looks pretty old to me. I had to bring this one along. Um, I've got to say actually, because we, we talked about this one not long back, didn't we? Um, and I, I was told that this was it is old, 
Well, I was told it was 1892. Wow. And again, which is something I love about guitar collecting is you, you, kind of, you can't know everything. Um, so I was actually corrected. It's 1911, which is great. Um, it's got connections to Salvador Ibanez. So anybody who's into Ibanez guitars, um, Salvador Ibanez was the original Spanish builder who made this style guitar. And in fact, he might very well have built this guitar. And Ibanez was stolen from the Japanese company that imported okay, them. Yeah, and they yeah, continued. Yeah, yeah. So they, they just stole the, the name Ibanez. Yeah. Um, Ibanza, or however the Spanish say it correctly. Um, but this one's beautiful. Uh, and it's funny, this one, I haven't had this very long actually, but this has been a want of mine for a very long time. It's just, just that sound, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful phrase. So, so sweet. Now, let's just talk about that playing. That was very, very good. Excellent. The, um, what we now call patina on modern guitars that are trying to look old. Just hold that up for camera, the side. Yes, yeah, so you've got. That's I mean, this actually, I would also point out, rare. it's got a big crack in it. Um, and usually, this sort of guitar, I would, I've got some friends, some luthiers that are very good at repairing things like this. This would usually go off, but because it's so nice, I haven't been able to part no, with it for any length of time. Yeah, it won't be um, the same, will it? But it, 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 and I will get that done, because that will open up, I'm sure, but I, I, I kind of love guitars like this, because you have to love them a little bit to Where look after them. This one? this one actually came up in an auction house, um, and again, it had ancient old strings on it, frets that were just it was green. It a real bad state, because you I, like setting up and working guitars. I'd, I'll buy a guitar in a, in a Tesco's carrier yeah, bag with a neck in a different Tesco's carrier bag if it's something I want, you know. I've actually been to Simon's house and he's had some bags of bits. What? Go back six months later and you've got something like this. Well, my last purchase, literally, in fact, this morning, I was chatting to a friend of mine in America. Um, I've agreed to it, is a harp guitar. Now, if any of you guys probably saw there was a harp guitar on the standout uh, on the show earlier. Um, they're very expensive. I've been looking one for, for years. But this one, somebody... Has, so you, you imagine a Gibson harp guitar. They've chopped the harp side off. They've literally just got a saw, chopped it off, cut it there. And I just went, right, I love that. I, sw I swapped them a Mesa Boogie amplifier for it, so I'm just got to send that out but then I've got to, I'm going to restore that have yeah. that put together again because I just felt sorry for it it was like a like the puppy that's in the corner so that's under you, fed you know are you a regular I know you're searching and looking all the time you are a proper avid collector of let's call them oddities for a minute you've said this to me before because oh, you've seen lots of collections and you've gone I'm odd you, you know me long enough you know I'm odd but I'm strange in the fact that, you know, you can see the weird guitars I've got here, but they don't sit in the same category. Most people are like, oh, God, you know, I've got a Les Paul, a Strat, and a whatever. That's what I mean. You know, I love this, and I've got a triple neck BC Rich that glows in the dark, you know, so. He's got some amazing electric guitars. Let's just go for the multi-strung one there a minute. Okay, well, this, this is the, uh, I've got two guitars here, electric and a, a, a classical. This one was actually made for me um, by a builder I didn't know until um, they sort of came up on Facebook. Um, but I've always wanted one. This is, this is a 10 string. Now... Where's this built? This is built in Leeds by... Oh, it's a British man. It's Emil Purcell. Um, ne unfortunately, never met him in real life. But amazing builder from what I've got. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing, you, you know, I, I liked him straight away because I, I took this out when he sent it to me. I just went, this is amazing. Exactly what I wanted. But there was a list of him apologising about things that weren't up to his spec, and I just think, oh, bless him. If I could build something like this, I, you know, I wouldn't apologise. It's amazing. See the little permutations here. You've got a sound hole in the top. Look, show that to the so, Yeah, so you've got a sound hole. So where, where you're sat, you can actually hear what's going on. Um, but this, the, the idea behind this is actually, it's essentially, it's a seven-string guitar, but with three drone Trans or harp strings, strings at yeah. the bottom. Are they it's, it's, in a certain key all the time, or do you want to...? You can kind of do what you want with them. You can set them. So, uh, I mean, it's like... Sort of yeah, so you've got that sort of thing, you know? And you can keep going. Um, 
but it's, I, lo I love it. I think it's an absolutely brilliant. What's thing. The, uh, the, the red one is it Purple Heart or anything? This is Purple Heart, yeah. So you've, you've got strips, multi strips in the back. Um, We've had, certainly had some diversity of sound here today. It's a stunning thing. Electric. So the electric, the next one up is the eight string. Yeah, good. And this was made for me as well. And this, this was built by a very good friend of mine, Stephen Hart. And I've actually got now. He's a British maker. 22 of his guitars mm -hmm. or something. Oh. He's, he's very persuasive. Like, okay. I've just built this, Simon. Mm, that's nice. How much do you want for that? Yeah. Um, it's got to be done. It'd be rude not to, really. It would, it? yeah. Bring you up and say, buy it. So we're going to uh, go through the amplifier of this one. So most, uh, the thing I find interesting is you get an eight string and most people play like the metal stuff, but what they, they're missing a trick really. Because it's actually a bass, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So you, you're missing it if you're not actually... Playing like a bass. you got all and of that sort of thing. Player. And most, uh, you get loads of metal players. I mean, not I'm slagging off metal at all, because it's brilliant. I mean, what they do, in fact, I find it quite difficult to drop the tuning to some of the like, low A's or whatever. I can't keep them in tune. But um, is it, actually, I'd, I'd, my very first eight string was a Conklin, um, which I didn't get on with. I loved the guitar. Bill Conklin, an American amazing builder. But it was actually this, but it had a high A. And because I'm... I'm quite hard on playing. I just I'd, I'd put the string on and play one chord and break the string, and it was it was actually designed for country, um, which obviously doesn't work for me. So yeah, I, I sold it some. Well. Yep, it's amazing, isn't it? Crazy. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Excuse me. You've got so many guitars here. That's the only reason I'm saying let's move on a little bit. I'll show you this because this is again something that many people can find. But again, if you're a guitarist and you've got the set of skills to play guitar, then you, you should buy one of these, because it's, it's great, you know? Are you a salesman? Me, Very yeah. Salesman. I build these. So this is um, an 11-string fretless. Oh, my goodness. Um, That's a bit of that. OK. Which is interesting. Um, this is based on an oud, which is like oh, a Middle yes, Eastern yes, yes, instrument. Yes. Um, made by Godin, Godin. limited. Uh, kind of run. They, not surprisingly, guitarists went. Well, the How's that the thing? 90s? Did they the 90s? <laughs> yeah, about then. Yeah, sort of late 90s, wasn't that yeah. I think? Um, but it, I mean, it's just a, a great piece of kit. It's very playable. Um, but the problem is obviously the intonation. A lot of people go, "You can't play in tune." Well, that's not actually the idea. It's degrees of out of tune that make it sound good. Oh, if you know goodness. what I mean. This will so, be fun then. So, I'll tell you. Um, Give so it's like kind of absolutely brilliant. It's the best guitar for someone who's out of tune all the yeah. time. You just go, I do it, but it's jazz, man. You know? Yeah, very, very but it's, good. You, you can get really get that sort of. So you've got on a normal guitar because you've got it fretted, you, you get the one note. But on this, you've got yeah, mic, microtones. Um, which is the whole thing first. It's a sort of. very record. Well, all these are really good for recordable guitars. Th this aren't they? is the thing. I mean, I do lots of recording and I play with, with an awful lot of diverse musicians, really. And you always get the gig if you've got the weird thing that they go, oh, I, I remember years back, a guy going, ah, can you play sitar? I was like, no, but I'll take the gig and I'll work out how to do it. So, you know, I've, I've got a sitar and all this sort of thing. And you, you don't have to be, I mean, 
this sort of thing, if, if, if I went up against a proper Oud player, I'd look, I'd embarrass myself. Self, you know, well, totally. we don't know what Oud players sound, though, we don't. <laughs> but the way I play it, or the way I fit it into the music I create, or the music that, you know, I, I, I can lend, put this into, it's unique, it's unusual, and it doesn't, you can't get a, a, a normal guitar to sound like it. Yeah, very, um, same very... as the, you know, the baritone or the, you know, the contrabass. These things, if you've got them, I mean, there's a lot of people that go, well, I need this other guitar, or I need a Les Paul, I need a Strat, I need a Tele. Play the same riff but the after a while, everything sounds the same, doesn't it? You've got, a, you know, it's got a single corner, it's got a les, you know, a humbuck or whatever. But if you've got something like this, there's nothing you, you can justify it. If there's a place in your musical Very good songwriting, inspiration, oh, totally. If, if you pick something up, and I actually quite like it because it, there's not enough guitarists that pick up something they have no idea what to do with and go, okay, just have a go, you know, which is the fun part, isn't it? Um, so in the corner, this is what I like about Simon's collection. Maybe we went down to his house. Uh, Oh, a few months ago, it's just it's bizarre. You think, okay, we got lime green. We got something lime green coming up here. Smarty guitar, I call this one. So. We've affectionately been calling this today um, the Christmas tree bling guitar. Oh, wonderful! Love it. So, this is quite a nice little thing. Excuse me. Made by. This one's. Uh, this is interesting because I don't know the builder. The guy's called Derek Misselbrook. And I'd love to meet him because he's just as mad as I am, I think. Let's hold up towards the camera a little bit. Look at the, head, um, look at the colours on the head stop. So you don't know what pickups are in it? It's... Um, Obviously single coil. I do. I don't uh, know what they are off the top of my head. <laughs> um, nice pickups. Hey. Switches. What so switches? you've got switches. You, you obviously, you've got your, your five-way switch, your normal switch, and then you've got these. Um, and you, can, you, I mean, this is more important than the sound, obviously. Um, you, I like this guitar because I'm a very lazy guitarist. If I can get away with entertaining people by not actually putting any effort in, it's probably just. Yes, I appreciate. It. You do that, but also it's great. The kids love it at Christmas. I just put it on a stand and put their presents underneath it. So. When we talked before this started, I promised not to call him old. <laughs> so I, I, I wear the banner happily. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this, this keep noodling. This, uh, this really does signify the guitar collection of Simon Jones, and it's like I said before, it's find another one. It's, it's ever evolving as well. It's kind of. Brilliant. And the cool thing is, I mean, today, walking around, came here, I thought, brilliant, you know, I'm going to meet lots of people, I'm going to see lots of guitars, but I'm on a stall, and then I'm talking to you, so I can't really walk around. I think I've agreed to two guitars, you know, buying two guitars. I told you not to. You kind of... How are you going to get them home with it? To email them home. I, well, no, it's, it's quite good. He's taken them with him. I went, oh, we'll talk about a deal like this, but I'm like, Sneaking yeah, we will have a talk about that deal. <laughs> but, um, hey, no. Simon. Very, very good. I love your playing. Thank you very much. Very good. Nice to see you again, Lars. Yeah, you take care. Yeah, Brilliant. You, Thank you very much, Mr. Simon Jones. Thank you.